Changing your oil correctly saves your engine and your wallet. It's also a task that you can do really easily and a lot more cheaply yourself. But first, we need to look at what oil actually does in our engines. Because motorcycle engine parts move against each other, they create friction, which in turn creates heat. Therefore, the oiler's job has three main purposes. One is to lubricate the engine, reducing friction, which affects the second, which is to reduce heat. But you may or may not be aware of, there's actually a third, and that third is to clean the engine internals. So what oil should you use? Well, there's two types of base oils. There's mineral oil and there's synthetic oil. Mineral oil is a natural organic oil, which as we all know, comes out of the ground as crude oil. Whereas synthetic oil is chemically engineered inside a lab. Mineral oil, because it comes out of the ground, has some impurities in it and it's subject to oxidization. Whereas synthetic oil is much more pure because it's created in a lab and has less oxidation levels than mineral oil. So technically full synthetic oil is far superior to mineral oil. After saying that, it all depends on how your bike's being used. Whether you're running it in, or whether you're just using it for commutes, or whether you're using it for some more extreme riding, like racing, or riding it in very hot environments. Really, in these containers is about 80% oil, and the rest of it is additives. All oil, regardless of whether it's synthetic or whether it's mineral, has additives added to it. And these additives are agents to increase viscosity, to decrease foaming of the oil when it's under stress, and to also decrease wear. Also, there are other agents like detergents, there's emulsifiers and things to stop oxidization within your engine, all mixed in with both full synthetic and mineral oil. We're all familiar with oil and how that affects wear of an engine, and maybe even foaming under stress, but what's this oil viscosity? Viscosity is a fluid's resistance to flow, or its thickness, or its stickiness, or how easily it pours at a certain temperature. So viscosity can be really low, for example water, but it can also be very high, for example honey. So when it comes to base oils, whether that be mineral oil or full synthetic, viscosity is the most important property of the oil. So based on that information, when you go into an auto dealer to choose your oil from that huge selection that are on the shelves, how do you actually interpret the oil labels? Now, unless your dad talked to you about this when you were a young whippersnapper, you'd have no idea what those meant. Well, if you're still not sure, don't worry, because I'm going to explain all of it to you right now. So if we take this oil container as an example, we've got an alpha numeric name. And the first part of that name is 15W. The W represents winter. This 15 here indicates that the oil is still pumpable to temperatures down to as low as negative 25 degrees Celsius. The 50 is an index rating number telling us that at 100 degrees Celsius, the oil can still sufficiently flow throughout the engine parts at the recommended level. In addition to mineral and full synthetic oil, there is a hybrid oil called semi-synthetic. Semi-synthetic oil is simply a mixture of mineral oil and full synthetic oil. It's a 50-50 blend. So it actually is a slightly inferior blend of oil to a full synthetic. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a purpose. Because full synthetic is an engine oil that you tend to use in more extreme conditions, e.g. racing or hard road riding. So a semi-synthetic oil is still perfect and slightly better than a mineral oil if you do ride your bike relatively hard. But a mineral oil is perfectly valid for a bike if you mostly use it for commuting to work and coming back and you're not pushing your bike tremendously hard. Talked about three types of oils. We've talked about the two base oils, mineral oil and full synthetic oil, and then we've got the semi-synthetic, which is a combination of the two. And then you've got ester, and you may have seen this word written on some oil containers in auto traders. So what is ester? Ester molecules are purported to be the best lubricating molecules on the market today. Ester molecules are very stable and have a very high performance characteristics at low and very high temperatures. Oils containing ester molecules are really good for cold temperatures or engines running in extreme conditions. So if you don't thrash your bike, but you basically just ride to work or commute or have a nice free ride through the hills or go for a bit of a tour, then you'll find mineral oil is perfectly good and will take great care of your engine and you don't need to go and spend all that extra money on full synthetic oils. If you just commute to work and you still want to use full synthetic, of course, go for it. It'll protect your bike fantastically, but it's probably not going to protect your bike any more than mineral oil under those riding conditions. So effectively, you'll just be throwing money down the toilet. And sure, R90s aren't high revving like inline fours are, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't consider full synthetic. 
Initially I used mineral oil in my R90 for its run-in period, but even after the run-in period I also used it for commuting to work and for many years after that doing on-road touring. But I switched to full synthetic when I started to push my bike a lot harder on road and ultimately a few years back when I started to race on track. Under harder riding conditions, considering semi-synthetic or full synthetic is the way to go. This is even true for low revving bikes like the R9T. And even using mineral oil for the running period and not only the running period but for many years after that, I never experienced any mechanical problems with the engine in the 8 years that I've owned this R9T. The key is to choose the oil based on how you ride your bike and the temperature of the environment that you ride in. But whichever oil you choose, make sure it's got the API and JSO specifications as specified in your user manual. For an R9T, it's an API rating of SJ or better. And for the JSO, you want to be looking for a specification of MA2. But what is JSO and what is API? The API is the American Petrol Institute's rating for viscosity. And remember earlier we were saying viscosity is the most important property of an oil. So in that case, what does the API of SJ mean? The S in SJ stands for spark. This is telling you that this oil is meant for engines that require a spark ignition, which in our case with the R9T is exactly what we're looking for. So we want to make sure that you grab a container of oil that has an API that starts with an S. If you've grabbed a container of oil that has a C instead of an S, you've grabbed the wrong stuff because the C stands for compression, and it's used for compression ignition engines, such as diesel. So for our R9T, make sure you grab the stuff with an API that has an S in the code. You'll notice there's a J following the S in the API standard. The J following the S in the API specification is telling you how modern the technology is that is used within the oil put into that container. As the oil technology has improved, that letter has moved throughout the alphabet from A all the way down to, for at the moment, on the R9T, J. You won't see A, Bs and Cs anymore, the technology has moved on so far, but make sure you get an API specification starting with an S for spark ignition and at least a J for the technology that's been put into the oil. And finally there's JSO, and you'll see this acronym on oil everywhere. It stands for the Japanese Automobile Standards Organization and it's often followed with the letters MA. The JSO rating was created to make it easy for us to quickly see whether the oil has made to work with a wet clutch. But our R9T is made with a dry clutch, so make sure you grab oil that has a JSO of MA2. MA2 is made for modern motorcycles, and that's what you need in your BMW R9T. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like down below, and if you'd like to see more on the R9T in future videos, then feel free to subscribe. But if you can't wait until then, then you might be interested in this video right here.